Happy hump day, everybody. It is absolutely freezing outside. Um, I can't go for a walk and I need something delicious. So I'm gonna make something delicious. That's really easy and really fast. This is gonna be a quick video. I'm doing oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. Um, and this recipe, I'm just gonna warn everybody, is slightly experimental because I'm making them gluten-free because <laughs> despite my every other video I've made, um, which is all gluten, forward. Uh, I actually have a pretty bad gluten intolerance, so I need to ease off. I'm going to do something um, that is gluten free, but you could easily swap, um, you know, what I'm using for just regular all purpose flour. No problem. So um, how do you make cookies? Pretty simple. Um, you cream butter and sugar. So in one bowl, which is going to be my main mixing bowl, I've got half a cup of butter and I've got a full cup of packed brown sugar. So I had light brown sugar on hand. You could use dark. Um, it would be delicious. You could probably also use coconut sugar if you wanted to. Um, I don't have enough, sadly, so I'm using brown sugar. Then my dry ingredients, separate bowl. I've got a cup of, uh, so for me, gluten-free flour and a half teaspoon of xanthan gum, and that's just to keep it together, prevent it from, prevent it from getting crumbly and falling apart. Um, but if you're using regular flour, it would be a cup of all-purpose flour. Then I've got a cup of large oats. Um, you could probably use like the quick, the quick oats too. It might have a slightly different texture, um, as long as they're oats. Then I've got, um, that's my oven. Then I've got a half teaspoon each of baking soda and baking powder. And this is where it's gonna be a little bit experimental for me because I usually make my cookies just with baking soda. But um, in my free time, I've been doing some, uh, let's call it, you know, reading, research, whatever. And um, America's Test, Test Kitchen is pretty adamant on putting both baking powder and baking soda in cookies. Why? Um, so what baking soda does to cookies is that it makes it like flatten out. Um, whereas baking powder gives it a bit of rise. So you don't wanna have a cookie that's like cakey and that's just a dome and you also don't wanna have something that's too flat um, and almost like a lace cookie. Therefore, put the two together. We'll see that should give us the perfect cookie consistency. So we're gonna see um, what that is like. I also have one egg on the side uh, and I also have some chocolate chips standing by. You could easily swap chocolate chips with raisins, dried cranberries, nuts, um, I've even done grated carrot, really up to you. Um, I'm craving chocolate and I really like chocolate and oatmeal. Um, so the method is simple. Cream the butter, add the egg, add the dry, add your chips or fun things, whatnot. Um, so here we go, let's mix. And I will adjust my screen slightly so you can hopefully see what I'm doing. And I'm using an electric beater. If you had a stand mixer, I would highly suggest using a stand mixer. It's gonna go a lot faster. Um, but we're gonna use this because it's what I got. So I'm just, I'm starting on low and I'm doing that because if I start it on high, um, basically your sugar is gonna go everywhere and you're gonna lose a lot of sugar. And you don't want that because you want your sugar to get mixed in with your butter. Um, I will pick up the speed so that it does actually cream and get smooth and fluffy. I seem to like the word fluffy, but you know, when it comes to baking, it's important. Um, you do want fluffy. So now that it's sort of all mixed in, I will turn it up. Our batter is going to get turned. And this is called creaming. So if anybody's ever heard of the creaming method, um, you can use this for cakes. This is common also with wine. muffins, many desserts. The technique is the same. So you like cream your butter and your sugar together until it becomes nice and light. Um, and it does also grow in volume. So that is what is called creaming. Um, and then, so as you can see, it's gotten a lot lighter. And bigger, I'm gonna stop because I'm really impatient and I want a cookie. <laughs> but you could keep going. Actually, under normal circumstances, I would keep going. But like I said, this is a quick video. So let's do it quick. I've just added in my egg. And again, starting on slow. I'm blending it in. And it's gonna 
definitely get even lighter, even smoother. It's great. So again, it's like all nice and sexy. So all of my ingredients, I did not sift them together. I'm just gonna mix it up a little bit before I add it in, because you're adding it in all at once. So unlike a cake, where you would be alternating at this point wet and dry ingredients with cookies, it's just all the flour, all your dry stuff, all at once in it. I'll mix it in a little first, then I'll add my chocolate magic. So again, always slow. So like I said, this is gonna be experimental because I'm using gluten-free flour. Um, I have not made these particular cookies with gluten-free flour. I don't usually make gluten-free cookies, to be honest, all too often. But with my recent extreme high intake of gluten, today is the day. So just gonna let the beaters go to release the batter. You can lick that later, if you want. And I am going to say that I will add enough chocolate chips. What does that mean? Enough for me might not be enough for you. So really use your judgment. Um, that's three handfuls for me. Like I said, I like chocolate. Um, I am using semi-sweet chocolate chips, the way it should be. If you want to use milk chocolate, you're wrong. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Um, and this is what the final cookie batter looks like. So it is thick, it is spreadable. Um, and I am now just going to scoop this um, onto a parchment lined baking sheet. Let me go grab that for you. So I have a big one. You wanna give your cookies enough space because theoretically they should flatten out a little bit and also rise. Um, so I have this handy dandy nifty, it is called a disher, um, that is the official name. If you don't have this, you could use a spoon and just uh, wipe it off with your hands. Um, so I am just going to scoop, scrape it on the side. I like to start in the middle to give myself space. And I'm giving myself, I would say about like um, one and a half to two inches between each cookie. Just to be safe, we wouldn't want our cookies colliding there, would we? That would be terrible. Um, so I will finish scooping these. Then they are gonna go into a 350 degree oven. I will say for eight minutes, because that is my standard cookie baking time. Uh, I do rotate in the middle, so four minutes, rotate four minutes. And I will be back to show you the finished cookie product. See you soon. Baking is finished and we are back to look finished product of our experimental gluten-free oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. This is my final cookie. Uh, so I did do eight minutes, four minutes, rotate four minutes at 350 degrees, and I used the top rack in my oven. Uh, that's usually the hottest, and that's good for these guys. Um, so they didn't poof as much as I was expecting, but that is probably because of the gluten-free flour. Um, if you guys do it with regular flour, you'll let me know, but they are um, on the softer side. Mmm. And it has a good cookie texture, um, despite the fact that it's gluten-free, which is good because there's nothing worse than like a grainy, crumbly, gluten-free cookie. So this actually has pretty similar texture to a regular cookie. I'm happy with it. I hope you're happy with it. Enjoy the bake. Have a good day.